In today's episode of Scripted Style, David and I are going to talk about web performance and new laptops. Welcome to the Scripted Style Show. I'm Todd Gardner from TrackJS JavaScript Air Monitoring, and my co-host David Walsh, creator of the popular blog DavidWalsh.name. How's it going today, David? I'm good. How are you? I, th I think we both have new toys. Is well, this true? you you have a new toy. I'm, I I I don't have mine yet. So the so Apple announced uh, a new laptop, a new MacBook recently, and honestly, my my laptop here uh, is uh, is getting a little long in the tooth. I have a an early 2015 edition MacBook Pro. Uh, you know, the last really good one with all the good ports. Uh, but like the hard drive is totally full. The fan goes basically all the time because of you know Slack and web browsers and JavaScript and that sort of stuff. And uh, yeah, it reboots on me about once a week, more than once a week. Uh, so it's not so good. So how, I ordered. How, how old is this one though? Let's qualify it. How old is it? Is it like the 2015 one that everyone yeah. hates? It's or... not the one that everyone hates. What do you mean everyone the, hates? Well, I, the, I love it. The bad keyboard and the touch no, no escape no, key. It's before no, that, no, right? This is before that. So it's physical keyboard. Okay. Um, like uh, it was the last one that like I could uh, like everything's still soldered onto it, so I couldn't do like a memory upgrade or anything like that. But uh, it's a fantastic machine that I've used and loved for a long time. But five years is is old in laptop terms. So I am excited to get the new one. December 5th, that's when I get mine. You got a new laptop too, didn't you? I have a whole bunch of new stuff and my desk is a hot mess right now. So Mozilla um, loaned me out from DevTools to Firefox for Android. Is, so, there like a, is there like a card swapping? Is there like a Mozilla management poker game where they're like, I'll trade you two David Walsh's <laughs> I think my manager just got tired of me and he's like, go over there. Um, but no, so one of the big product launches should be um, a new Firefox or Android in 2020, which everyone's excited about. Um, and to help keep that um, moving along, they just added some, some engineers from other teams to uh, become Android legends. So I got a Google Pixel 4 as my test device um, as well as it was just time for my two year laptop renewal. So I have a new 15 inch. Two years? You get a new laptop every two years? Every two years. Five years. Five years. No, no, no. Two years. <laughs> but we, we travel around with them quite a bit. And so they probably get beat up along the way. Um, so I've got my new laptop. I'm not excited about having a 15 inch. I love my 13. Mm. I love my little iPad esque. Uh, computer, but you can't fit as much memory in them. And so as I'm working on Android stuff on the old computer, it's just so slow and it, it's, it's killing me. So I've got the new one. I'm trying to set that up. I'm How much memory you, did they give you? 32. 32. So I am rolling, but I'm going through login hell, app download hell, configuration hell. But by the yeah. end of the day, I'm going to be a very happy guy. It's but, satisfying though, like setting up a new machine. I love setting up a new machine. I can't wait. Like, ne yeah, never restore. Never restore. I don't do you that. Get, with you get you get rid of all like those crappy little like configuration hacks that have like creeped in over the weeks and months, and you yep. get rid of those programs that you only needed once. Right but now, it's like weasel its way into your system, and you'll never quite get it out again. Yep, feels good. Feels clean. Um, I might need to hit the gym to carry it around because of how big it is, but uh, I'll live with it. Let's say that. I, th I think you'll do more than live with it. I think it'll be great. It'll and, be great. Yeah. But, and I know like you, we've talked about this in the past. I'm ready for someone to take me away from Apple. I'm, yeah. you know, just like the speed, like they don't come out with things fast enough. Um, the features that they come out with and everybody who's and ahs about came out for Android or whatever else like three years ago. I'm desperate for someone to take me out of the Apple laptop, iPhone, yeah. tablet loop. Nobody can do it. Yeah. I'm there to so, be had. So, yeah, I, um, I'm, I'm with you on that because I have needed a new laptop for probably a good 18 months. 
And I just haven't found an option that I liked. I didn't want to go to the new MacBook because I didn't like the clacky keyboard and I didn't like, um, uh, it was it was basically the keyboard. It was like, that's just a non-starter. If I can't like reliably type on this thing, this job is typing, like yeah, I'm out. But it wasn't quite enough to push me to Windows. It wasn't quite enough to like go that way. And no, Linux wasn't really an option for me because I don't want to spend all of my time futzing with the operating right, system. Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, but Windows is just, the fact that I'd have to spend a day like messing with the registry just to turn off the ads in Windows is, I, I don't know that I can get by that either. Registry uh, hell. Registry yeah. hell, man. So I've been sitting here doing doing nothing. But I think uh, I think Apple's pulling me back in. Committed to a new one of these. I don't know. I still have an Android phone, but I don't know. I might, I might get a switch to iPhone here for the next one. Dude, cool. I'm stuck in the web of Apple. There's no getting out. <laughs> I, I looked at this Pixel 4, and it looks nice, and it has some nice apps, but, like, I'm not used to the gestures. I'm not used to the whole Android thing. So, um, like, I this is a Pixel 3. So, I mean, it's not all that dissimilar from the one, the your test device. But, like, I know all the gestures, and I've used them forever, and I think it's a great device overall. But Google is getting scary. Like... Things will come up, suggestions will come up on my phone for things that I don't know how Google knows that I want that. <laughs> and I do want that. It's good. Like, I'll be scrolling through, like, a news feed or whatever, and Google will give me these suggestions of things that, like, I truly am interested in. But how did Google know that? And it's, it's honestly just a little unsettling. It is too much. But I... In the end, I don't consider Apple to be much better. <laughs> so, I mean, that's where we are with mobile. Yeah. But speaking of better phone and computer performance, you want to talk web performance. I want to talk about web performance. I've been thinking a lot about web performance. So, like, recently we had this issue in, in TrackJS where we would made some changes to how we store uh, data. Like, and, and what those changes were doesn't really... Uh, isn't really substantive, but like we we're reorganizing something to get some new capability under the hood, and the side effect was that this one particular kind of customer, the super rare, it only is like maybe three three individual customers in our system, had their data set up in such a way that this change negatively impacted their performance. So like when they would go to this page or whatever, um, it was just significantly slower after the change than it was before. Wow. And we just didn't like that. Like, it wasn't terrible. It wasn't, like, breaking. So it wasn't, like, causing timeouts. It's just, you know, we like our pages to load in one second, and now the pages started loading in four seconds. And uh, and we didn't necessarily know about it until after the change had gone out and people started using it. And then, like, th then we started figuring out, like, oh, we're seeing some performance issues. Um, but the tooling around this to like understand those problems is super hard. It's like, it's not very intuitive, I guess, to like understand when, when you have a page in your site that is not performing well, or when you have an Ajax that's not performing well, or maybe this JavaScript asset that you're trying to download, downloads slow all of a sudden. Understanding that is not super easy as it should be, right? Because we've been talking about web performance as an industry for, I mean, I mean, we've been talking about it forever, but I feel like we were started getting really serious about it maybe six years ago, to the point where like almost every conference I would see would have one or more talks referring to web performance. Sure. And, and people like advocating for it and startups or businesses starting around web performance and like, this being a whole like niche, but we still kind of suck at it. Like I've chatted with a bunch of people about like what they use. And the biggest answer that I've heard is nothing. It's too hard. It's too expensive. It's too like, I just don't care enough. And, uh, and that kind of sucks. 
And so I, I was wanting to talk to you about like, what do you use? You have a website with like thousands and thousands of pages and probably hundreds of thousands of assets that get pulled in for various things. Sure. How do you know? Do you know? Do you track any of that? Do you, how, do, how do you know what the performance of your website is? <clears throat> so every time I create a redesign of my blog, I go into it with the thought of maximum performance. And that means um, lazy loading assets, whether it's images. I have a loader for the JavaScript to only load in, for example, the syntax highlighter. Um, if it's needed on a page, because some blog posts don't require it. Those are a, a few of the pretty simple things that I do. Do you um, use just like the native um, concepts for lazy loading, like using async or whatever? Or do you actually have little JavaScript snippets that you use to like lazy load images? JavaScript snippet to lazy okay. load images. But again, like right now, it's not as, my, like my current theme is five years old. so. I could do way better right now. So the next time that I, I create a redesign, I'm going to go a different route with it. Um, right now, one of the big performance hits on my site is pulling in MooTools, right? This big JavaScript library along with some custom plugins. And when I look at that, all of those are things that I actually don't need anymore, that the native APIs in the web will do for me. Uh, I don't need to shim Ajax anymore. Um, there are methods to do certain types of scrolling. There's an intersection observer API that I'll be able to use to load images as the user scrolls down to them instead of writing mm. a bunch of custom JavaScript, right? So those are some of the things that, that I do around performance um, and I guess scripting. But there, when it comes to web performance, there are a bunch of different aspects that you need to look at. Um, Another aspect is how you're serving those assets, right? So I use Cloud, Cloudflare to um, force HTTPS to um, optimally deliver images, for example, because that's something that they can do to optimally cache. Um, uh -huh. So those are, those are some of the things that I do. Um, another big boost to performance can be using service workers. So you're saving actual hits to your server by using a service worker to um, serve up stuff that's already in cache. So that's another thing that can help. And one thing that I do from blog post to blog post actually is before I upload an image that I'm going to use in a blog post, I will put it through like image optim or some smushing um, you know, image utility to- I use tiny PNG. Tiny ping, okay. Yeah, to um, either loss losslessly if I can or unlosslessly um, optimize that image. So yeah. I go into each, not just each redesign, but each blog post, knowing that I want this to be as fast as humanly possible. And I address those, you know, those files or those assets as I need to. Um, I inline a lot of CSS. Um, so I don't link to a bunch of style sheets if I don't need to. So I feel like I'm doing all of these things and trying to do things the right way. But what sort of kills me is that you go to like a site like CNN or ESPN and you look at the source code and they're just like, fuck it. They just throw yeah. it all in there. All yeah. of it, all yeah. of it, uh, 200 JavaScript files. Yeah, you click on a link and it takes 10 seconds to load and then like modals are popping up and ads are shoving into place. And yeah, it's just like they don't care. It is. And like, and it's, it is. It's because they don't care. They're like, if you clicked on a news story, it means you're bored and you're looking for something to do. And reading this news story is the thing you decided to do, and you're not going to leave. We got to show you the ads. We already got money for it. Right. Like, like part of me is like, well, they don't care because they're not selling you something, right? Like ESPN isn't really trying to sell you anything, but they sell their ads by page views, right? So mm -hmm. in a way, you'd think they would be. And there have been numerous statistics about how you know X, X amount of delay in a web page rendering like stops X percent of users from mm -hmm. continuing onto the page or staying on your site, right? Um, and Google actually, if I understand correctly, incentivizes 
good performance by factoring that in in search result position. I think that's a thing. I think so um, too. I also I want to say that I saw a tweet recently that Google was going to not block your site, but like they were going to tag it. They were going to put like a little icon in the search in the results of like saying this site is slow. Right. Which is nuts, man. Yeah, it's tied up with their AMP strategy, though, which I don't know how I feel about that. Like, they're trying to, like, push people, like, if your site's slow, we'll push it through AMP, and then we'll make it fast for you. Mm. I, I have a WordPress AMP plugin, but I have to – I'm yeah. a man of the people. I got to spread it around everywhere. So, so you've talked about a bunch of different, like, strategies that you've used to, like – uh, optimize performance on your site, but do you do you measure what the performance is? Like, do you use anything? Do you like scrape performance timings or have somebody else scrape performance timings? Or like, do you know how long uh, your imposter syndrome post takes to load for the average viewer? I don't look at them at at a post by post basis. And <clears throat> quite honestly, I don't check the like the performance metrics too much. There hmm. are tools out there where you send them a URL and they tell you you're not gzipping this. You're not uh, this image could be optimized. You're loading a 500 by 500 pixel image, but you're using it as 250 by 250, and you should create a new image instead. Right? There are lots of these tools, um, and if David Walsh blog was my day job. I'd go all in on figuring all of this stuff out. But in the end, for me, it's sort of an eye test thing, right? Like if I type in davidwalsh.name, do I see nothing happen for a while? Yeah. If in between clicks, um, I think one of the things that is sort of in my favor is that I have a, an Ajax um, loading system that I created for myself. And that sort of makes things feel faster because it's not yeah. site, blank page, site again, right? So along, I guess to answer your question, I don't pay a lot of attention to it. Um, you do like development time performance testing, right? Like you'll, I've made a change, I'm gonna like check it, I'm gonna deploy it, I'm gonna might use like my in-browser performance analysis tools. I might view it from like a few different like devices and make sure it all feels good, but you're not like ongoing, like measuring how long does this page take to load, right? No, right, again, yeah, the time just isn't there to, to put that much into it. You know, I, I think that I have sort of a philosophy of if I feel good about a redesign when I launch it from a perf perspective, it's going to carry a long way. Hmm. And honestly, I don't think that my my site's perf issues or areas where it could improve are necessarily front end ish. Um, I still use WordPress. I don't use a static site generator, right? And I'm sure that that is something that would make my site way faster. Um, but but as a whole, but, I mean, you kind of are because you put Cloudflare in front of it, right? And, and right. Cloudflare, like you know, cached all of your pages as users visit, and because there's like probably very little dynamic nature to any of your pages, I mean, there is probably all of those static HTML files, you know, generated. They're just sitting in Cloudflare instead of sitting on your server, right? Yeah, there's that too. I mean, and I think one of the issues that now that you mentioned that, that is sort of um, interesting about performance is that there are so many ways to improve the performance of your site, right? Whether it's on the, the server configuration side about like gzipping and stuff, whether it's, you know, a lot of times, one thing that Google always hit me for was that um, the request to um, page download was always slow was one of the mm -hmm. slow things, right? So maybe it's like WordPress PHP is a problem. Um, you can optimize your assets. You can use, I don't know if I said service workers yet. You can do that. And then we haven't even talked about performance once the page has loaded, mm. right? Like using a profiler to see like 
when someone clicks this button- Did you write, did you write too much JavaScript and you're taking too long or you're doing too many like animations or you're doing too much processing or you're right. doing too many Ajax calls or- Right. Yeah. But, and there's like so many different areas to try and specialize in this that it's one of those topics that is almost like paralyzing. Like, where do I even start here? Yeah. And that's why I start with the easy stuff, right? I start with the images, with the lazy loading, all of the stuff that would show up in an interview question. If you start out with those type of, of um, basic optimizations, then you can put together sort of, um, you know, casual sprints to improve on other things, if that makes sense. But it, it's all, it's also all tied into um, return on investment, right? And how important it is. For me, my blog is really important to me, but it's not my primary job and I have a family and I have stuff that I need to do. So I can't always put aside time to do this. The other thing is that my blog time is precious to me. So I'd rather invest in writing than making the older articles show up a yeah. tenth of a millisecond faster, right? Yeah. So that's sort of the way that I look at performance. Uh, with regard to with with regard to my blog, and I'd love to have someone on from ESPN or CNN, like one of these huge sites, and be like, "What the fuck? Is it just too hot?" Like, <laughs> I don't discount how big their platform must be and how many people touch different parts of the site, um, but you, you have to believe there's got to be a better way, right? Mm -hmm. I want answers. ESPN, I'm calling you out right now. So if any of our listeners work for ESPN or know somebody who works on ESPN or CNN or, or any of these like massive giant, sites. any giant content sites, you let us know. We want to talk to you. We, we won't even be like jerks about it. We just want to know like, what are the trade-offs that you need to make on a daily basis between eh, advertising revenue, which pay all your salaries and, uh, and not, delivering really slow content that'd be cool i think that's fair and you know web performance um i mentioned like a month ago i did an interview with the people at pornhub yeah and i one of the things that i kept pushing on there was a bit of back and forth right um and i knew going into it there were some questions some house secrets that they wouldn't tell me um and the ones that I didn't get answers on were mostly with regard to web performance in their video player, because that's the money right there, right? Like the video player is, that's what people are going to the site for. And I'm like, how do you make it faster? And when you think about it, everything is going from blog posts and like writing into video content. And so video content and profiling, um, in web performance are going to become even more important um, moving on, moving yeah. forward. So one of the things that I think is super interesting about web performance, and this maybe isn't as relevant to, uh, to your blog, but maybe is relevant to other things you've worked on, is that um, if you have a complex system, like you have you know, a couple of different services and some database layers and you got some stuff going on in the back end. All of that stuff comes together in the web layer. Like you might have monitoring on the back end, but like the, the catch all place where an error will manifest itself or a slow query will manifest itself is in uh, web performance of the, of the end user experience. As a real user is like going through your web page and doing things, and then they click on a button that generates a service call that calls a database. And if that database call is really slow, well, you can s observe that slow behavior on the web layer. You can say, oh, this transaction, this Ajax request took a really long time to load for this user or this kind of user, or on this page, this request took a long time. Um, and I think that's really interesting in that you can get so much visibility to use an, an almost overused term observability 
uh, you can get so much observability into your system purely by monitoring the behavior and performance of that client side layer. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, like, if a website is slow, the first person they're going to talk to is the web guy. Yeah, not, not the database guy. No, not the sysadmin. Front end developers are often that first line of support in an organization, just because that's where the users are interacting. And so I've I've worked on teams uh, where it's the front end team that triages all the support issues. And it's like, yeah, it's not my thing. The database is slow. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, the UI is slow because I call the database and the database is slow. Well, we should go talk to them. Uh, it's But the front end teams end up with that. But it's because everything manifests itself in the front end. I agree. And that's why I think that it's really important as front end developers that we make an effort to understand the stacks around us. Um, because that supports us when we, you know, when a situation like you mentioned comes up we have that credibility to say, no, the problem is over here. And I think that in doing so and making that diagnosis, we sort of make ourselves look good. You know, we yeah. position ourselves as that expert. The other thing that's important in a situation like that is going to a tool, running the page through it and saying, look, we're doing everything we can here. We're doing everything we can here. Um, this is fast, but, hey, the page load time is taking forever. That's not on us, right? So, you know, using these tools to our advantage to improve our credibility is really important and understanding yeah. how to use those tools as well. Um, you also mentioned complex apps. In working on Firefox dev tools, it's important that people know that um, all of our dev tools are written with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And you look at a, a dev tool panel like the debugger, that's as complex as you're going to get, right? Yeah. Because we're like halting executions and doing a bunch of crazy stuff. And we have a performance team inside dev tools that looks at each at, looks at and monitors each panel's performance um, through doing a specific set of tasks. Um, and we had one um, we had one situation where we implement, we thought we did something very simple to make the code a little cleaner, I guess, a little more modern. And it caused a 20% slowdown in mm. that action. So we needed to use the dev tools profiler to figure out why dev tools was slow. We had to de debug our debugger. And in, in one case, it came down to a certain type of loop that was executing hundreds of thousands of times was just faster than the loop that we had changed it to, right? So like that's a micro optimization of performance, but if you're somebody who works <clears throat> in Canvas or, or something that's really performance heavy, you're gonna need to know how to use the profiler. And uh, it's just another layer, another aspect of what it means to work on web performance. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's good. Web performance means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. There's, there's how fast your assets are loading, both like for you at dev time, and then there's for other people. There's how fast is your code executing after page load that you need to do like dev time like profiling to understand. There's implications from uh, other parts of the system that will manifest itself in the front end. There's um, how fast is perceived performance? How fast can your page go until like the user thinks they can start interacting with it? Uh, and there's these are all like important in different ways and in different mm, ratios depending on your use case. So I think it can mean a lot of things depending on what kind of system we're working on. I totally agree. But in the end, like everything else, it comes down to return on investment and like how much you can put into it. When I was at my first like small agency job, didn't think a thing about performance at all. And that's because, you know, you're like you're allowed X amount of time to work on this thing. You know? It's one of those things where clients in management, whatever else, 
they just expect it to be fast. Like they expect it to work. Mm -hmm. And that's why having a site that looks really good <clears throat> to me is always the most important thing because people don't appreciate that. No one appreciates the fact that it works. It's just supposed to work. Mm -hmm. No one expects, uh, nobody appreciates that it's fast because it's supposed to be fast. You're a computer guy, you know? So that's why I think that stuff like performance, uh, you can add accessibility to that list, right? If you're not somebody that needs that accessibility, you don't think about it. Um, and I think it's just one of those things that's underappreciated that, you know, devs who listen to a podcast like this should really start thinking about. Security is in that Security category yeah, that, as well. It's like right. you expect your website to be secure. I expect it not to get hacked. Right. Uh, and that's, that's not a feature that I should pay extra for. Right. It's just supposed to be. Yeah. Well, I think that's probably a pretty good place to, uh, to wrap up the conversation today. Uh, I mean, this whole episode was, was takeaways a bit, but is there, any, is there anything uh, interesting and notable that you would kind of underline for us today? Yes, I need to set a fire on myself to do another redesign because I'm like, I have all these <laughs> ideas. You've been talking about this for like a year. I have so many ideas in my head for how to make things faster. Um, the problem is that I'm not a designer, but I always critique the design very much. So I just need to get over that and get something new up so everything can be faster. Um, the other takeaway I have is that we need to have Greg Tatum from Mozilla on this podcast. He's the person that um, writes our profiler tool. Mm. And through talking to him for just 10 minutes, I've picked up so much knowledge about um, what's fast in JavaScript and what isn't. But just, I think the main takeaway from an episode like that is him showing us how to use the profiler. I think that's like the biggest, the, the biggest step for people, the biggest place that they can stumble or just not get it is how to even use the thing and how to say that's the thing that's slow. Um, that's my main takeaway. How about you? Um I really like that when I uh, suggested this topic earlier today and began thinking, web performance meant one thing to me. To me, it meant how fast do my uh, pages and assets and requests load on my web page. And through our conversation, that um, that's just fractured out into a lot of different things. It's like, yes, those things are part of it. Uh, but like you care about those things one at dev time and then again at like production time, like as an, in an ongoing basis. And then there's also like, well, what happens about interactivity within the page? And how long does this flow take? And how long do these different like interactions take? Uh, which is more complex than just measuring uh, how long a request takes. It could be several requests. It could just be plain old logic being executed in the JavaScript layer. Uh, and so web performance can just mean a lot of different things. Um, and so I think I need to get a little bit more clarity about words and what they mean <laughs> within this space, because I think just saying web performance isn't descriptive enough to a developer. I think we'll have different ideas of what that word means. There are several layers and, you know, web performance is just starting once a page loads, right? because you got to be fast from that point on too. So yeah. you're absolutely right. All right. I think this was a fun show. I definitely learned a lot. Uh, if you learned a lot, please let us know. Let us know what you think of the show. We do this for you. Uh, if you have ideas for what we should talk about or who we should interview or what we should banter about or stupid jokes we should tell, please let us know on Twitter. I'm at Todd H. Gardner. I'm at David Walsh Blog. See you next time.